The crime documentary, The Tinder Swindler, draws you in because of the unbelievable way in which the con man, Simon Levier, defrauds women to fuel his larger-than-life lifestyle. The documentary focuses primarily on three of the women he scammed after meeting them through Tinder. They show that he's ultimately running a massive Ponzi scheme where he meets one person and showcases his high lifestyle. Then later, after earning her trust, borrows money from her so that he can live large and showcase that lifestyle to the next victim and then use her to fuel his next scam. It's bizarre and intriguing at the same time because we are left wondering how he manages to deceive all these people and many of them simultaneously. But as the documentary shows that he is unable to keep up the charade, his illusory fantasy ultimately crumbles and explodes in his face. It's Abraham Lincoln who said you can fool some of the people all of the time and all of the people some of the time. But you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. The point being that no one can get away with a life of deception for long. Eventually, people see through the facade. The sociologist Emile Durkheim pushes us to look at crime not merely as something to get vicarious pleasure from but as an event that opens our eyes to the greater sociological realities that lead to it. He said that crime is a manifestation of a disease whose symptoms are already prevalent within that cultural space. It is not a one-off random event, but the potentialities already exist in smaller ways within that medium and is finally pushed to its inevitable conclusion. In this sense, the Tinder swindler reveals a lot about the online dating platform and the effect it has on individuals and societies. The online dating world has exponentially opened up the dating market in an unprecedented way. In the past, people looked for dating partners mostly within known social groups, hence couldn't get away with such actions because it would be impossible to keep up the facade given the proximity. The social community would keep checks and balances, pushing the person to harness in such instincts. But with online dating, the world becomes the dating platform, and it becomes much easier to conceal the past, put on an act, cut off the person completely if things go wrong, carve out a whole new identity, and so on. In the show, we see that the women he cons are from three very different parts of the world. The distance and separation helped him get away with his scam for so long. It's not that the online dating platform is necessary to pull out such scams since people have done it in the past too, but these platforms do make it a lot more conducive to do so. The online dating world itself has an illusory element such that it feels like Pleasure Island in Pinocchio, a wide range of choices and pleasures available at the swipe of a finger with barely much effort and responsibility attached to it. But one could argue though that Simon Leviev is not a symptom of the online dating world because he is intentionally out there to defraud people whereas most people online are not. But the fact is that everyone has particular desires and motivations and subconsciously project a facade to achieve those desires. Whether it's short-term physical pleasure, overcoming loneliness, emotional support or long-term commitment. The problem is that romantic love or eros as embodied in Greek mythology is a drive in each one of us that promises much more on the onset than it's actually able to deliver in the long run. So even if a person starts off with the right intentions, infinite choices, ease of accessibility and illusion of better prospects leads to varying degrees of deception and manipulation. Whether we like it or not, online dating is now part of our world and will be the way in which many look for who they want to be with. But stories like the Tinder Swindler reveals the shadow side of it, that maybe we are not suited to handle the temptations that lurk within. Simon Leviev might not be an exception to the rule, but merely the potential of deception in each of us that has grown to become a full-fledged monster.